What's up, sons? It's Blind Ride with Son of a Tech once again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at yet another updated miner for light hash rate cards. Specifically, this is going to be T Rex Miner version 0.24.7. Now, the changes that are rolled into this are going to also include version 0.24.6. So we'll be going over both the changes for both of these releases as they have been pretty much pumping out new miners right and left. We had one that we covered kind of in the crypto mining morning show earlier this week, and that was 0.6. And now we have 0.7 already out before I could even get to testing 0.6. So hopefully this is the latest greatest up-to-date news that you can get as far as unlocking the hash rate for your NVIDIA GPUs. And we're going to get into it right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Gamersups. Gamersups provides a healthy alternative to sugary energy drinks with delicious flavors like Misfits Melon or my favorite Blue Raz. I use the Gamersups as an alternative to support my active lifestyle outside of content creation. Caffeine-free options are great for late-night gaming after the kids have gone to bed. And my favorite part about Gamersups is that they accept cryptocurrency. And for a limited time, when you purchase a tub with cryptocurrency, you will receive a Bitcoin shaker. Follow the affiliate link in the description. And don't forget to use code SOAT at checkout. Welcome back. So first things first, let's go over the test bench. It's going to be an i7 or i9 12900K and that is mated to a gigabyte Z690 Aorus Master motherboard with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 clocked at 5200 megahertz and we have essentially two GPUs on here that we'll be testing today. The first one in GPU slot zero is going to be a PNY RTX 3060 and that is going to be a revision two light hash rate GPU and then in slot GPU one, which is kind of the one next over the second one that is going to be an MSI RTX 3060 and that is light hash rate revision one now in an ideal world with the MSI version here that is a revision one you would basically be running it on a Windows 10 system with dev driver 470.05 for a full hash rate unlock getting you into the 50 mega hash range but we also have it in this system just to kind of get an idea of how these unlockers are working on everything, including the revision one GPU in this particular case. Powering it all is an EVGA Supernova 1000 watt power supply, and it is functioning perfectly well. And we're going to go ahead and hop into the patch notes now for T-Rex Miner. Starting things off, we do have T-Rex 0.24.6. You have ET hash improved light hash rate unlocker, light hash rate tune value increased from 71 to 74 by default. The new light hash rate tune scales is somewhat different, so it's recommended to let auto-tune find the optimal parameters. In other words, for the first run, remove the auto-tune mode and tune parameters from your batch file if they are set. And that's just kind of what we're looking at. Now you also have ET hash and auto Lycos 2. There is a new light hash rate auto tune step size and auto tune interval parameters for finer control of the light hash rate unlock behavior. You also have added support for ETH and Firo dual mining, which we will be discussing today. And that says to use the same overclock settings as ETH plus Raven. Now we will talk about how those overclock settings are important, but they don't fully resolve kind of some of the instabilities uh, still to this day, unfortunately. You also have another note for AutoLecos 2, which is a new data set mode parameter to enable or disable double, double buffer mode. And basically you have the switch one, which is single mode or two, which is double mode. Add sockets five proxy support and then new temperature color memory parameter to control memory temperature highlighting in console and web UI. You also have the web UI multiple improvements here, 24 hour view on the graph, an ability to hide individual charts, power, average hash rate, etc., on the graph, and recompute average hash rate power when zooming in the graph. Ability to reorder slash hide the GPU table columns and auto propagation of the minor node list to all nodes. Here are some bug fixes as well for ET hash RTX 3060 G104 is not recognized as an LHR card. 
that has been resolved. We did confirm that today as well, which is good news. Veriblock binding is broken since 0.24.2. Linux log file contains ANSI escape sequences and web UI log file retrieved through web UI has trailing zeros. All these should be resolved. Known issues though that are still there. Web UI shows a blank page if you had 15M or 2H graph views selected on the previous version. Temporary solution is to delete the browser cookies. And then we also have more updates in 0.24.7 and here are the bug fixes. Some command line arguments don't take precedence over the value set in the config file. Web UI performance degradation introduced in 0.24.6. Web UI monitoring page shows a blank page if you add the 15M or the 2H. So the one mentioned that has been resolved. And then Web UI impossible to set LHR tune values with decimal point. HiveOS users, many of you complained that your hash rate on light hash rate cards is fluctuating too much compared to the Windows version. The reason is HiveOS sets hash rate dash AVR 30 for T-Rex, causing it to report 30 second average hash rate as opposed to the one minute average, which is the default. A temporary solution would be to edit your flight sheet manually and manually add hash rate dash AVR 60 to the extra config arguments field. Otherwise, we've been told that there will be a HiveOS release that fixes it permanently. Lots of news and updates here. This is probably the biggest T-Rex minor update I've seen in quite some time. It is evident that they're putting in some pretty hefty work here. And let's go ahead and talk about if it pays off because that's going to be the big thing. The previous top dog, of course, is going to be NB minor. And as we have noted in the past, the thing about NB minor is they appear to be ahead of the curve for light hash rate unlocking GPU mining software. And because of that, you see NB Miner come out with the latest update, which unlocked up to 74%, and all of the other miners start to follow suit after that. Typically, what you'll see is something like G Miner come directly after, and then LOL Miner seems to come somewhere in between there, and then T Rex seems to be a little bit further down the line. Now, LOL Miner has been some of the most stable as of recently, but it does look like T-Rex is catching up here with this, especially this specific release. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the hash rates, but for clarification, previous hash rates on NB Miner, and that was version 3.97 with no overclock. The PNY model revision 2 had a hash rate of 30.27 mega hash a second and the MSI revision 1 had a hash rate of 31.13 mega hash a second. For comparison, T-Rex version 0.24.7 with no overclock had the PNY revision 2 GPU at 31.05 mega hash a second and the MSI revision 1 GPU at 31.41 mega hash a second. So as you can see, we are starting to get basically some better unlocked, more tuned in performance out of something other than NB minor, which is quite impressive in my humble opinion. Now it still could be argued that it is within, of course, I suppose, margin of error. However, we're about even right now, so that is good. We're just going to take it as a win. I think at this point, you know, you just go test whichever one works the best and then you stick with it. Now, NB minor overclock. We had 36 mega hash a second on the revision 2 GPU and 37.02 mega hash a second on the revision 1 GPU. That was with a plus 1300 megahertz overclock. Now, here's where T Rex kind of acted a little funny. We did have initially when we applied the overclock that it started to take effect right away and then it dropped off the unlock on one of the GPUs and had to regain it. That being said, we had the overclock hash rate on the PNY of 35.96 mega hash a second and on the MSI 36.63 mega hash a second. This seems a little bit lower once you get the overclocks in than NB minor, but once again, it's within margin of error. Basically, we are looking at the exact same performance. Once again, this is more than likely because the technology for the unlocker is more than likely coming from NB minor initially and everybody else is implementing it. Of course, I don't have any proof for this, but it sure seems like that's the case because NB minor is always the first and everybody else follows suit and it's almost identical in the hash rates. So there you go. Now, 
The thing that T-Rex Miner has that a lot of others don't have is an unlocker that allows you to dual mine other currencies. One that they added here recently was Firo, so it's ETH plus Firo. Now for the overclocks, you need to make sure that you copy the overclocks that they recommend and do it for, of course, in this case, the ones that you use for ETH and Ravencoin. Now, unfortunately, when testing, I did not get stable results. And of course, your results may vary, and I'd like to hear about them in the comment section below. But for me, I had anywhere, and this is just all over the place, but we had anywhere from one and a half mega hash a second, right? To three mega hash a second on ETH. And then anywhere from five mega hash a second to six mega hash a second on Firo. Presumably everything had gotten tuned in and it was trying to hit it had already done the unlock. So really bad performance right now for that dual mining. I will have to go ahead and test it more frequently or more thoroughly here coming up. And I do intend to do that and have a video later this week for you guys. Just saying initial testing results for this were not good at all. So that's kind of where we stand. Make sure if you guys like this type of video that you hit the like, you hit the notification bell, and you comment down below to show YouTube that you like it in the algorithm. And to show me that you like this type of content so that I keep creating it. Because if this type of content isn't being successful, we're going to go ahead and try to make a shift into something that you guys find more beneficial. We will always continue to test new hardware as it releases, as well as try to test everything to the best of our ability and continue with the how to's for everything crypto from decentralized finance to, of course, mining. Thanks for watching. I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to see more. Also, you can check out this playlist for more content talking about cryptocurrency.